Here we have a project that mixes Python and Rust. I'm using PyO3 here, and the basic structure is that you have a source that's created here automatically when you do an init, and it creates a library file for you. So it's really set up for you to build something in Rust and then exporting that into Python. So let's go ahead and first take a look at the function here. So why would we want to do something like this if you needed to build some really computational expensive or uh, maybe memory expensive code this would be a great way to do it is to build it in rust and export it into python we can see here that we're using pi function and then there's a rust function using fn and calculate pi so what happens here is you can pass in how many digits of pi you want and it shows you that it returns back a pi result f64 so we say let mute pi so there's a mutable variable defined and then basically for every one of the iterations uh, so essentially the count of iterations that you need let's go ahead and do the formula here to calculate pi finally pi is actually returned now if we look at a python module implemented in rust next this is where the pi module comes in and you can see here that lib digits dot pi is going to be the name of the shared object file that will be created and this is something that will need to be placed near the uh, python file unless you wanted to do some kind of fancy environmental things so that i can actually use it and import it in a script and then finally we just say look let's go ahead and wrap this function together the one i defined earlier and actually make this into a shared object module that's really all we need to do it's also good to just pay attention to look at the cargo file. This is where all of the key definitions are in the project. Like for example, if there was some kind of third party dependency, but here we go, we've got everything inside of this directory here. So what I've done to make things a little bit easier is I created a make file. And I like to use make files because a lot of times I have multiple steps together and it makes it really simple. So all we need to do to run this is we need to say uh, make build. Now, if you already had the project built here, it's not a bad idea to actually go through here and say make clean. So we'll go ahead and say make clean. Perfect, and notice how that actually removed that shared object file. Typically not a great idea to check that into your uh, source control either. So that's often a good way to clean it up and maybe even in your get ignore to actually add a ignore for the .so file but first let's clean it up great now i'm going to go ahead and say make build perfect and now it went through and it build it builds this directly in this um, project directory and i have a .so file here right so that's the lib digits uh, pi .so finally the only other thing i need to do is somehow call it from Python. Now I could open up an interpreter or in this particular scenario, I'm gonna write a small little Python script. And what I like to do when I'm writing a small little Python script is do uh, chmod plus x, the name of the script. In this case, this would be pi.py. And that makes it executable. So then it'll look at this line here, which is called the shebang line. And this says, look, uh, go ahead and launch this in Python. Now all I need to do to launch it in Python is just do dot slash. So that way you don't have to do as much work or even uh, call out a specific Python interpreter. You just do dot slash pi dot py. Finally, I import the file, which is going to be lib digits uh, underscore pi. So it's going to import this so file here. And then I go ahead and I calculate to uh, this approximation. And then finally, uh, here's my uh, final result here. So let's go ahead and run this. There we go. We can see 3.14149, et cetera, et cetera. Right, so this is a great way to build, you know, again, computationally or memory intensive code, mix it into uh, a Python script here. And again, as long as it's in the same directory here and however you wanted to package this up, maybe with Docker, et cetera, you're able to actually leverage the power of Rust in a very simple way with Python.